So welcome to the new Google Sites platform, where you can make a website very easily. The URL you want to go to is sites.google.com forward slash new. And when you do that, you'll be taken to a website that looks like this. Make sure if you're not already, you log in up in the top. To create a new website, we just click this plus button down here, and Google starts making us a basic website. And the website is going to look like this. We've got a page with a header and an image, page title up here, there's a site title up here, and some area for just regular content down here. I'm going to give this page a title. I'll give the website a title. And I want to change the header image, so I'll go over here to change image. I'll click. I could upload my own, but I'm going to search for one using Google. And all of the images that Google shows here are licensed for reuse, meaning we can use them. It could be a good idea to make sure that the license for this particular image doesn't require giving credit to the person who took the photo, but for now, I'm just going to move on. So to continue adding to this page, we uh, want, might want to put a picture on here, and we might want to put some text on here. I'm going to grab a picture and drag it onto the screen, and it automatically gets uploaded and placed. Now I might want to add some text. So I'll double click the content area, and from these options, I'll choose text, and then I'll paste in some text, like this. Now you can see that the text doesn't quite take up the same height as this picture, so I want to drag the picture to be a little shorter so that these two items are closer to the same size. That's better. Now I want to add some images down at the bottom that are icons for academic social networks so that people could click these icons and then go to my profile on these academic social networks. So I'll drag those images onto the screen like this. Now those icons look a bit big, so I'm going to make them smaller by just dragging them to a different size, squaring them off, like this. Okay, so now we have some icons down here. Now we just need to turn them into links. So here's a Google Scholar icon. So I'll grab a link to a Google Scholar profile. I'll click on the icon, I'll choose this chain, and I paste it right there. And now when someone clicks on the Google Scholar icon, they'll be taken to a Google Scholar profile. So let's do the same for ResearchGate and Academia.edu. There you go. So now you have three icons on the bottom that link to your academic social network profile. And here's the About page. So let's say we want to add some other pages. We'd go over here to Pages, click the Add button. So here's some pages that a lot of researchers tend to have. They have a research page, they usually have a teaching page, and they often have a CV. And we've now just added all those pages. You can see that they now show up in the menu area up here. And we can click on each one of these from our editing screen and go to each page. So you notice these pages are blank. So we could change the header type, and say give them an image like we did on our last one. I'll do that quickly. And the CV page, I won't give an image because I want it to look rather uh, plain. Let's go back to the research page and put some content here. So there's plenty of ways you can fill out this page. You might just have a list of your own papers. You might include abstracts with those papers. Or you might have like a more discursive description of the research that you do. That's the kind of description I'm going to paste in here. So again, I double click this content area, choose text and paste and it automatically populates. And you'll notice that when I click on this heading, the text editor shows me that this is uh, labeled as subheading, and that is the same down here. And this body text is just normal text. And those heading differences matter for Google search. Okay, so now we have a basic research page, and we can go to a teaching page and fill that out. Again, I double click the content area, choose text, and paste. So there's a lot of different ways you could fill out your teaching page. You could just list the courses that you teach, maybe with a course description beneath each title, and perhaps a link to the syllabus, and there's probably other ways. You'll notice that when you go to the, back to the insert 
portion of the sidebar, you can actually upload YouTube videos. So if you have videos of your lectures, you could put those on your website. Okay, so now we have a teaching page. Let's go to the CV. So there's two ways you could post your CV. One is to paste the text directly onto your website, as we've been doing. Double-click the content area, choose text, and paste. And now your CV is on your website. But you might want to have a printer-friendly copy of your CV on your website. One way to do that is to just choose some text and link to a PDF. But another option is to just put the PDF directly onto the web page. I'll show you how to do that. So I have a CV in my Google Drive, so I'll go here to Google Drive. I'll choose Recent. And when I find the CV, I'll double click it. So I double click here, and it's automatically been put onto the web page. And I'll resize it so it's the full width. And as you can see, now the CV shows up uh, as if it's on a piece of paper. It preserves all its original formatting so that it can be very easily printed by someone who wants to print it right off of your website. Okay, so now we have a basic website with four pages. We'll come back to the home page. And you'll notice that the home page says home, but we called this about, so I'll go up here to pages and rename that so that they match. All right, now let's talk aesthetics. So Google Sites gives you a few themes here, and when you click through these themes, you'll see that the text on the top and the things around the text change a bit right here. And even this menu bar will change, for instance, like with this theme. It now has a bar with its own color. So I'll choose this theme. I'll select the modern font for this theme. And I want to change this color up here, so I'll go through these colors. And I don't like any of these particularly, so I'll choose my own color. And that works well for me. One thing I like about this theme is that it has a little bar underneath the page that you're on so that you have get some feedback about where you're at in the site at all times. So let's say you want to preview your website. What you do is you go up to this little eyeball icon and click that. And now it's showing you what your website will look like if somebody else was looking at it. So not from the editor view, but from the public view. So as you can see, you can click through pages here, look at what we've created, and Google has done us the favor of providing us what the previews would look like on other kinds of devices. So for instance, a smartphone, things would look like this, obviously things change size, and you'll notice the menu is no longer on the top right, rather it's up here, you click on this, and the menu populates here, and then to get the menu to go away, you tap on the X. You can also see what it looks like on a tablet, and that actually looks quite a bit similar to what it looks like on a desktop. And to get out of the preview mode, just click the X. If we want to publish it, we click publish up here, and we can choose the name here, so I'll type in a name, and you can see that it automatically now is telling you that this will be the URL for your website. All right, well, there's a basic website with new Google Sites, and it took just a few minutes.